Hello and welcome. I am Jacqueline Nichols, proud matchmaker and creator of Discover Love Academy. And I'm excited because we are on to our second quarter and now you get to hear some more amazing, absolutely incredible information from our responsive communication coach. And the topic is so phenomenal. But before we dive into it, I would love to have Christopher introduce himself to you and tell a little bit about why you're part of this, Chris. We want to know more. We want to know why you contribute to our Discover Love Academy. Well, you know, a lot of it centers around innovation for me, but since I, I took a break and wrote my book, Heart and Gear and Engineer's Erotic Journey to Freedom, I'm sort of like the Elon Musk of like emotions in a way. So I'm, 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 what I'm trying to figure out is like, how do men you know, wake up and find their own heart so they can be more creative? You know, how can we contribute better? How can we help all work together to form a culture that allows us all to thrive together? So that's where I'm coming in is from more of a, you know, a, a system side, but also how important it is to understand how we all like live and breathe together. I like that. I think that's so important. And one of the things that's really big for me is having the masculine energy and perspective that you bring. I'm fortunate to work with so many incredible ladies, but I think sometimes we need to hear from the man. And I love that you wrote a book trying to get through the engineer brain because I have a whole lot of engineer clients. So, you know, getting into the erotica, the passion, the communication, really knowing what you're trying to get across to somebody, they're actually connecting with on this level that you want and it is mutual that's right beautiful beautiful it works all right so our title which is so awesome it's about collaboration and meeting in the middle and this is something i am so passionate about communication is so important and too often courtship and relationships, they're just as skewed. Like one's doing all the work, the other one isn't feeling really heard or they have expectations, but they haven't expressed them. So I want you just to kind of dive into what made you get this title? Because I think it is one of the best titles ever. And it is something we really need to dig in to discover so much more. It, it's actually from my personal experience. I mean, you know, we all kind of throw ourselves into the bedroom and just trying to figure it out. And after a while, you know, I've discovered there's some patterns that work and some that don't. So it's, um, you know, finally realizing that it's, it's all about allowing each other to just be ourselves. And, you know, that is a, just kind of an easy way to get past, you know, this performance anxiety or, you know, trying to generate something or entertain somebody, you know, that, that's just, just not the point. Like real intimacy is like dropping into just an opportunity to work. Can I just be myself here for this moment? You know, I think that that's something that we can forget how important that is because especially if you've had, you know, relationships that didn't really take off and you had the intimacy, but there weren't really a connection. You were being sexual, but it wasn't connecting. Or if you were in a situation where it's been a, a long time since you've really felt that connection. Right. And it is about authenticity. It's like really being who you want to be with that person. That's the one person you should be able to be the most real with, the person behind closed doors. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. And I think that that's what people are missing. You know, they spend a lot of energy comparing to their past, blocking people from getting closer, just really not sure what they want to bring into their space. And it does take the tools to communicate, the conversation. So what does that initial co-creation look like when you're trying to connect with somebody? You want to have the right languaging so you both feel like you're being heard, but at the same time, you don't want to feel like you're writing up a business deal here. You know, it's like it's still got to have the romantic ambiance along the way. Well, I'll tell you two, two quick examples. One is one I use all the time is to, to separate the difference between, uh, you know, an unattached offer, which creates structure and asking for somebody to entertain you. So the first one is, you know, you want to buy me a coffee? And the second one is, I would really enjoy spending more time with you. Can I buy you a coffee? I so they clearly, stop. everybody needs to write that down. Like, there's a different <laughs> way of saying things. Totally. It is. Like, when, even when my clients, they'll message members in our internal private system, a lot of times they make statements. And it's just, you know, I'm like, you have to invite the person in. You have to encourage them to feel like, 
I want to respond to that, not, oh, okay, well, I don't know, what does he really want from that statement? And that is so powerful. So I'm like, okay, everybody, write this down so you know how to say this in an inviting way. Right, and exactly, and that's the invitation. The first example, the next thing the person would have to do is buy me a coffee and then sit down and listen to me talk. Because do you want to buy me a coffee? I don't own any of the responsibility at all. It's all asking somebody else to generate something. The second okay, example, right? Saying. Yeah. Second example, I would like to spend more time with you. You know, would you sh join me in a coffee? Is A, you're setting the stage that I want to understand you and I'm going to buy you a coffee, which means I'm going to create the structure. So the next thing that you have to do is nothing but step forward in the space that I created. Yeah, I love that because I have clients that so often they'll get frustrated like, okay, I've sent out messages. I've told people I've met somebody at, a, you know, at the bar or I met him through a friend or met him online, but it's not really going in a direction where they're getting a reaction and saying, I want to spend time with you. I'm going to be treating for coffee. I'm going to be there. I'm here. You know, the coffee is the landing place in between the two where we're both going to enjoy something warm and toasty. But what we're really saying is while we're there, we're sharing time, not just, can I buy you coffee? Can I, you know, just, I think that that's something I guess even as saying it to you right now, I'm thinking how many times do we kind of feel like, okay, so did you, just buy me coffee in exchange for my time. No, you bought me coffee because that's the place where we're going to sit and we're going to have our hands warmed around a mug and we're going to talk. And so you've created a scene versus an exchangement of, you know, okay, what, what you know, what's your two ninety five coffee in exchange for this conversation? You're not putting a price point on it. You're doing an environment in, where you're creating a space. And that is huge. It's so important to really take it away from the day-to-day -day grind and really make it where, hey, I want to get to know you. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, is there going to be coffee? Is there going to be wine? Is there going to be appetizers? You know, you've set the scene. Exactly. And, and the energy behind the statement is, is where it's so hard for people to remember what's being conveyed. So it's not the words. It's not the, you know, trying to, what am I supposed to say? It's how do I say exactly. something from a vulnerable place that gives somebody else permission to say no? Because oh, I like that because we do need to set people up to actually be able to say, no, thank you. And right. I would rather somebody say, no, thank you. When I say, you know, I'd like to get to know you and have a cup of coffee while we're doing it because then there, there's an, there's an exit versus can I give you a mug and you can go walk down the street by yourself? Cause if you're basically saying, can I buy you a coffee? Well, great. Well, I'm off to meet my friend now. Bye. You know, but you've actually said, Along with that coffee, we can get to know each other. So you're creating what the whole package is about. Yeah, and the, and the, and the vulnerability in it is what creates connection. So when, you, when I say, I would enjoy sharing time with you, you know, would you join me in a coffee? That puts me in a position where if somebody says, no, you're an idiot, I, you know, that's stupid. You know, like that, you know, that's, you know, why would I want to do that? You know, it gives them power over you and puts you in a position of, you know, a moment of vulnerability. And I'm not saying you have to do this all the time, but it's a gift to the other person where they can just kind of breathe and go, wow, this dude totally gave me the right to make him out to be a stupid idiot. And he just kind of shut his mouth and allowed me to have my choice on whether I want to join him or not. Right. And that creates safety. It really does. And for women, if we feel safe, heard, validated, and clear what the intentions are, we're more apt to say yes. And if we say no, we say it from a pure heart, not from a rejection. Exactly. We're literally like, we're just not interested. That's okay. But thanks anyways, you know, and it, awesome. that is received in a much warmer way right. because it gives both people a chance. And it's so true. If we know what to expect, it's completely a different ball game. But too often it's a little shady, a little unclear, a little like, oh, I want to be polite, but I really have no interest. So no, thank you. And then the opportunity is missed when it probably could have been a good opportunity if it had just been clear communication. Yeah, that's, and, and that's funny because I was talking to a friend of mine, this woman the other day, and she's like, you know, it's weird. Like this guy's been texting me. He's texted me like four times and said, hey, I'm going to be in your neighborhood or like, hey, you know, uh, 
you know, like I, I, I know you're interested in this other thing. I was thinking about buying, you know, some tickets, but I don't know, you know, like all these soft messages. And she'll, she finally texted him back and said, dude, like you're giving me no offer I can respond to. Exactly. This is Unless my you like, give me a tangible thing that I can say yes to, I don't know what to do with all this. Good. I love that because that is one of my huge things. Like I get messages all the time and people are just like, Hey, okay. <laughs> like, what do you do with that? <laughs> and it's like, they really, you're all offended. You're not responding. And you're like, cause I don't know, hay is for horses. Like there's nothing to respond, but right. people do this so much. And I feel like they say a statement like that kind of like, Hey, I just want you to know I'm in your neighborhood. Okay, great. So what are you going to do about that? Instead, what they're really trying to say is, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. I hope you're going to say, oh, well, why don't you come over? I mean, and they're making you put the invitation, but really you're like, okay, but thanks for being in the neighborhood. <laughs> like we need to know that there's going to be a yes, that they're going to respond. And I think that that's one of the challenges is that people throw statements because they don't really want the chance for rejection. Cause if you don't ask somebody. Exactly. Exactly. They don't want to put themselves in a position where they will get a no. So they soft it out or make it ambiguous or don't really ask, you know, but that's when I, when we're, what we're leading towards is how does a dude create structure? That's how we create structure with unattached offers. Exactly. And it's so important because the, the problem is, is that they're, the, the dudes, the guys are getting so frustrated because they keep throwing it out. And the truth I feel so strongly is that those guys have put a lot of thought into being like, hey, how do I kind of softly say I'm in your neighborhood without sounding creepy? Instead of saying, I'm in your neighborhood. Do you want to go and meet for a glass of wine? If you're free tonight, I'm going to be, you know, so he's really trying to say, I'm going to be close. I'm accessible. Let's get together. But instead he's dropping the last two thirds of that conversation and he's missing out when that would help a lot. Right. Well, and I would actually argue that, that there's a more subtle message embedded in that, which is okay. I'll be in your neighborhood, you know, whatever, which makes it sort of easy for them to say no, because I didn't invest heavily in it. And, and exactly. you know, don't worry about hurting my feelings because I, I was in your neighborhood anyway. You know, like, fuck, forget that. Like, hey, I'm, I'm willing to drive 50 miles to come have a you know, glass of wine tonight with you. What do you think? Exactly. And you know what? A woman wants to know a man's going to put a little extra effort in it. Yeah. That is so freaking sexy to say, I'm not going to let some time go by. I know you've been really busy. Can I meet you on your lunch break? I don't want to wait a few more days to see you. It's not Great. just about convenience. It's how do we make it happen? And it is exactly, you are so spot on that by saying, oh, I'm in your neighborhood, then they don't really set themselves up. They've already oh. kind of said, oh, chances are she's busy, but I just want her to know I'm thinking about her, but that's not really no. that's still too passive. That's like wimpy wiffle ball. Right. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I can take a no. And a no's got a bad off three times and still come back and say, hey, you know, I know you're, you're busy again, but like one last time, I really want to spend some time with you. I feel something's going on. I'm feeling like, you know, a resident, like uh, my experience with you is, is awesome. I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out where you're at. Well, you thank know, you so let much. Let me know I if appreciate you want me to stop calling you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, and you know what? Honestly, like both men and women do things waiting for the other person sometimes to try two or three times. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things we put out comments. I remember umpteen years ago being on a first date with somebody and having to have a kid free day at the same time. And I kept saying, wow, I have no kids. Wow. I really want to go to the beach, but I kept just saying it and he's listening to me. And then finally he goes, do you want to go to the beach? And I'm all like, Oh yeah, that sounds great. And he goes, yeah. By the third time you said it, I realized maybe she wants to go to the beach. And I'm like, instead of me saying, Hey, I have the day off. I know we just met, but if you're free, I'm free. You want to go to the beach? That would have been a lot easier. Instead, I just kept going, yeah, I'd like to go to the beach. <laughs> I have the day off, but I wasn't actually asking him. And he just right. kept laughing, waiting for me to say it again and finally realized I better say it because the gal won't stop talking. But that's the thing we have. We give clues, but it's so much easier to be direct in communication. 
Hence, I did that quite a long time ago. But that's what we're missing is that question mark, that, you know, interaction, that actual ask out, because it's so much easier just to kind of go, well, by the way, I might bump into you. Okay. That's just not attractive. And it doesn't make you want to be pursued by someone that's so passive. And that's where that masculinity can turn up a dial or two. Yep. Totally. Yeah, that one's a big one. And I think that's where people are missing the opportunity to genuinely connect because they're taking it so soft. And then they're always kind of going, well, it never got started. And I have to be honest, in a lot of the interactions my clients talk about, they never get off the ground. Like they take so long to get to the second date and the third date. They let weekends go by and they kind of go, oh, I was thinking about you. Well, if you're really thinking about me, do something. Do something to show that you want to see me, not, oh, I was thinking about you. Okay, that's great. A lot of people are probably thinking about me, but what are you going to do about it? So how do we know to take the initiative and, you know, when to kind of step back? What do you feel with that? You know, that's a great question. I've, I've developed sort of a strategy where, you know, dating is you just kind of throw yourself into situations and sort of like, I, I like, I run a, I record what's going on in a different part of my brain away from my judgment. So, like that. you know, you just like, you, you give people compliments keep things moving. Like, that's awesome. I like this. I like this. You know, like, I'm kind of like this, you know, whatever, just like, keep it moving and don't go, Oh, I don't like that. Or like, that's a red flag. Or, you know, like I'll be, I can go on a first date, record six major red flags that are like total showstoppers for me, but yet still like spend the night and wake up the next morning. And like, what are we doing? Like, well, you know, let's get together next week and go to a movie. And in my mind, I'm like, Okay, that was just intense, but if we go to a movie, I can double check some of these red flags that mm -hmm. I'm carrying around in a more calm, you know, gracious manner, ask a couple soft questions. And so you just, you know, you just don't make a big deal out of everything. You just said like, okay, there was a lot of ego in the middle of that night that we just spent together. I don't really feel like I revealed a lot about myself, but we all do that. Right. You know, we all manage our deal, you know, in a lot of different ways. So give each other a break, you know, and, and see if you can breathe into something the next date or maybe the next date after that and just just stay it, keep it moving. I love it. Keep it moving. I think that's the number one thing is that people just get stale. Like you kind of you've kind of started something with someone and then you never really hear from them very often and you're kind of like are you still interested or are you not? And I know we all have different communication style, but both men and women kind of need to know the other person's still in the game. So they're still interested and you can't just assume they're interested just because you had a nice date, you know, a week ago. You have to actually do something with it. But I love how you talk about change up the opportunity. Yes, you might have, you know, been intimate. You might have gone out for a long dinner. You might have had a great walk. Go do different things and give a chance for that person to really reveal. That's why I'm a big believer in a good three to five dates before you decide too much because everyone's different at the different layers of learning to trust and connect and be vulnerable with a new person. Totally. And, that, and that's funny. That they, they, I'm, What's a lie for me just even recently was there's a difference between giving people a lot of compliments and reflecting them and like buttering them up and like, you know, like a lot of superlatives and you're like feeding their, their need to be validated. You know, that, that feels really good to somebody. If it's a connection style, it can be kind of codependent sometimes. Right. But if you, if you, the opposite of that is like, you know what, I'm going to reveal something about me that's kind of personal or I'm going to share something with me that feels you know, like where my anxiety is right now. Or, you know, like if, if, if I could hear you say this one thing, I would relax a little bit more. Or if you could just shut up for three seconds until I'm, you know, finished talking, you know, there's like, there's things that I can reveal that actually create more intimacy than 
buttering somebody up from exactly. your exactly. Well, and I think that's really powerful. I've noticed when you have that conversation and it's just such surface talk, it's like checklist talk, there's nothing deep. And then when you have that person you talk and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I haven't really ever told anybody that. And you just keep kind of talking, but it's not word vomit. It's more like flow, it's energy. You guys just, you feel safe to talk to that person. And you don't later go, oh, what did I say? When you leave the date, you're like, I feel energized. I feel like that person didn't drain me. So many people are so draining to spend time with because they need those compliments. They need validation. They need so much where if you're at least soft lobby balling back and forth, you're connecting and you're hearing them, but you also feel safe to share your story. You're not just being the listener. You're not just being the question provider. You're actually feeling like they want to hear your stuff too. And you're not having to over filter. I think that makes a huge difference for a lot of people because they, they're missing out on connecting because so many people are drainers and they're not really contributing to the conversation. Yeah. And they just, or they go on conversation over pilot, you know, or like, you know, autopilot and, you know, guys do that and women do that too. Oh, completely. For you sure. Know, like, now you've talked about desires and talking about desires. You know, what desires do you start talking about at which stage? I mean, for some, you don't want to come off too intense and too strong, but at the same time, you want to kind of know, are we on the same page here when it comes to closeness that we're looking for? What do you think about that? Well, it, 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 I think um, if you talk about like relationship styles and where, you know, who you're dealing with, you know, like what's their capacity for intimacy? You know, some people are all the way at like, oh, like sexless marriage is actually fine with me as long as I'm having these deep intellectual conversations or we're going and we're talking about art history or, you know, we're talking about math together in the back seat of the Uber on the way to the, you know, dinner, like, you know, these are all, you know, you can circle around and find out where somebody's at, you know, and then there's some people that, you know, like intimacy, like starts in the bedroom. Like I, I got invited over to a woman's house because she said it was cozy, quote unquote. And like, you know, do you want to go on a house tour? Okay. You know, she walks straight into her bedroom and she goes, how's this feel? I'm like, uh, all right. You know, and never left the bedroom, you know, like, yeah. and if, and if that's what your deal is, do that. You exactly. Know? She had a plan. She knew right. she was <laughs> you were safe. You know, she knew you were receptive. So you gave the vibe that if that was okay, she was going to be able to receive. And I think a lot of times people don't realize the other person is a passionate person, even early stages. And some people need more touch. Some people like on a date, if you're sitting there and no one's touching, you know, for some people, they're super cool with that. Like they don't need to touch. They just need to talk. They need to have a good time. Other people like we need to touch. We need to touch in some way. And really noticing how your partner is giving that touch and that connection. And then deciding if you want to reciprocate, but also communicating. Because sometimes you touch someone and they don't respond. It doesn't mean that they don't want to touch. They might have been so shunned from touch in an early dating. They don't know how to do it. So what are some of your more soft, subtle kind of physical connections on that first date to kind of break the ice of we're two people sitting across the table with our cups of coffee? Right. Great question. So uh, in conversation, uh, you know, tactic is simply how do you um, create some dialogue that has some vulnerability in it that creates that kind of like a warm feeling you know, like, wow, I can't believe you just said that. That was really beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. like oh I'll say God. something like, you know, that whole deal you just laid down, I, I, it just inspired me. You know, like I just felt really attracted to you. And like your intellect in that moment, like there's something about me that I totally get that. And it makes me feel, you know, just warm and, and at peace. And if, and if you can feel like if, if this person is feeling that same feeling, I'll just lay my hand on the table open-handed. Oh, I'll that's a good lay one. lay my hand down in the middle of the table. And if they put their hand in my hand, it's a, it's a moment of connection. That is then, really good. It is. It's just totally open-handed. And, and however long they put their hand in my hand mm -hmm. is up to them. I don't it's like grab right. their hand or squeeze mm -hmm. their hand. It's just an open-handed and breathe into that moment. And some people will just like three seconds and that's enough. Right. And, then if you, and if you can cycle through another piece of conversation that feels that same feeling again, you can put your hand out again. And maybe it's like 10 seconds. 
and you know lingering stare and just like let them respond in some way like say something that feels like there's it creates an opening mm -hmm. with a goal to be create an opening and then shut up right and let them like wander around in their grassy field of like their childhood and go wow that makes me i remember when i was 12 years old i had this like Thing like that happened too you know and then they tell this really vulnerable little story like oh my god that is so sweet that's just really inspiring and now all of a sudden you're holding hands for like three minutes right exactly and i love that that's a sign i've noticed it lately like you know i mean it's my job i'm a professional matchmaker and people reader <laughs> so i'm looking and i've noticed in different couples where you can see that the guy's like got his arm out and and she's not sure what to do and he's kind of like okay i'm just kind of crossing the line Line between the salt and pepper <laughs> just a little further past into your space across the table and when she does reach out and respond there's like the shoulders kind of calm down and it's like okay so we are making a connection and I love the fact that you were saying you know it might last for three seconds or three minutes but it's not like you're like a you know that sea anemone you touch it and it coils back in you know it's not like you're just gonna grab her and it's too much it's just you keeping your hand open and soft is inviting but it's also she can still release she can still go and then she's learning to trust you she's learning to give her consent of that first layer of communication and so it kind of rolls into what we've been talking about the motivation with consent and understanding you know we can talk about what we want and what our boundaries are and then really feeling that the other person respects that it's when you feel like the person isn't respecting it is when the challenge comes in so what do you think about how do you make that communication really clear for the motives for consent yeah i mean that that great question um consent and I've done a lot of reading and, and at, at lots of classes and, um, you know, it's kind of a big theme in, in my, my whole career is, um, you know, what is consent? What, what's the totality of consent? And for me, consent has to include motivation. Like what's my intent? So, and there's actually three parts. There's like the saying the thing, saying kind of like what my intention is with that thing. And then you have to ask yourself internally, what's my real motivation? Because there's, as a dude, I mean, I don't know if it's anybody, you know, I don't know if it's gender specific, but we all have like guilt and shame and shadows around things that we want in intimacy. And if we hide the real motivation for why we want to do that thing, and then we try to create something that's close to it that we're asking for but we think well if i can get her to say yes to that i can bend it into the real thing that i want to do right which is no no it's it's not cool you, you know there's a discipline to getting clear with what you really want to do in your psyche and ask for that because if you actually get a yes for that it's just free navigation you know, now we can just kind of play all around in that space and I don't have to trip over myself on whether I'm getting up to the edge of what I asked for. And I mean, it's as simple as this little, like the example I use is like, this woman told me this funny story. She goes, yeah, so I'm on this date with this guy and he says, hey, can, you know, can I touch you on the shoulder? And she's like, yeah, okay, sure. You know, so he's touching her on the shoulder and then she slides his, her, his hand down on her boob and she goes, dude, your hand's on my boob. I go, uh, yeah. And she goes, look, if you would have asked to put your hand on my boob, I would have said, okay. Right. And it well, would have been fun. If you ask, then take the answer. <laughs> you know, but he was too chicken to actually ask for the bigger deal and to like wander into it because he thought it could get away with it. Totally killed the whole evening. Exactly. Kind of sounds like, you know, high school sitting in the back of a car, like, dude, come on, game it up a little bit. You're out of high school. Come on. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, the, the wildest one for me is like, I've always wanted to tie a woman up in a rope and, and, and it's always scared me. Right. Like, deeply, you know, like, and I was in a relationship for a couple of years with this woman who was already like a kinkster and like a train top and like had been in many, many scenes and yeah. we need to ask her you know i better have my shit together and like know how to manage the deal 
Yeah, and, yeah. You can't be a total, you know, like, oh, it's my first time doing this. And, and stumble all over myself. Right. So to be able to, and it took two years for me to finally ask her if I could do that. And mm -hmm. it has to do with like, it was a like trusting myself that I could go into that and have her have this experience like, I love being in your rope. Mm -hmm. It means this, I love surrendering to the trust that you create. I don't have to do anything. I know what my role is in this and you've got the other role. And to be able to start that, go all the way through it and have it end in a place where it was just totally cool. Right. It's a massive breakthrough for me. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you've talked before and about shame and what we carry with how do we help somebody find themselves so we can break through the shame and have those aspects. And just like you're saying, you already knew this woman enjoys that kind of connection, but it still took you two years to really ask for it. So it's right. not just where their history is, it's where yours is. Because you could have approached it like, well, I already know you do it, so no big deal. But instead, it was you approaching it because it was where you were coming from. So how do we get to that place where we can speak up about our desires and our wants without being like shamed for it or, you know, saying only, I only want the shoulder, but I really want to cop the feel. Like, come on, let's just be where we are, do the shoulder, then after that, then ask for the boob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> step by step. Yep. And like, I'll tell another story. It's like, I, um, I, I don't know who you think I am, but anyways, I met, I met this woman at this party and uh, actually I'd met her just briefly at uh, this other party, just kind of knew her, but ran into her at this other place. And I'm talking to her, we're being kind of silly. And you know, there's a moment when a woman like opens her heart to you to just to see if you're paying attention, just like, just kind of like pops it open just for a second and then closes it up. And I totally noticed like, oh, she totally just showed me something about herself. So at that moment, I like leaned into her ear and said, you know what? I totally want to have sex with you. And she looks at me and goes, truth is, I want to have sex with you. I'm like, awesome. Like, how do you want to do that? Like, I don't know. Like, what, you want to just come to my place after this party? It's like, okay. No, no, I'm sorry. No, she actually said no. She said, like, I, I don't do that. And then I challenged her. And I said, can you answer that question from a place of not thinking of your fear, but what do you really want to do? She goes, oh, okay. I will go home with you. Yeah. When she took the fear away and you created right. a safe space, but it was also a mutual interest. Like you both were feeling that connection and right. whether you have sex at night or eventually you guys have sex. It's not really about the home run in an instant. It's more of, I told you, I feel like I want to have sex with you sometime and you reciprocated. So now we know where we're going with this. Right. The timing will play itself out. Yeah. So then what happened is we ended up in my bed and then I'm like playing around the stereo and trying to light the candles and stuff like that. And she turns to me and says, I feel really uncomfortable. And I'm like, thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. and, and I instantly stopped what I was doing. And I sat right in front of her and looked her right in the eyes and said, there's nobody here but you and I. There's nothing here but my invitation for you mm -hmm. to be whoever you want to be. Right. And all I ask from you is a chance for me to be who I want to be. And she said, thank you. I feel, I, I feel better already. So you don't want me to be anything. You don't have any projections on me. Like there's nothing that I'm supposed to do. Like, no, I got nothing. I got, I got nothing I want from you at all. Other than just like be who you want to be. I like that. And I think that that's the thing. Like, <laughs> we're taught and we're conditioned that sex has to mean all these different pathways for some it is a one night stand and that's their pattern or there's people that it means a relationship or it means marriage or it means commitment and it's so important to understand what is the other person thinking and with some people they might want a quick hookup and that's just the passion that the two of you have and that's all it's going to be and if you all know that but that doesn't mean that exact same person isn't going to find a new person that they actually want to court and date and take time because they feel their relationship potential exactly. we people at different stages of where we want to connect but I think that's the thing is we're not expressing that we have like these concrete views of this is what sex means to me it's like 
maybe it means different with one person than it does with another person. That's and the creative process. Exactly. Like open up a space and just see what wants to be created. Like, you know, I say clearly to women, I say, look, I'm in charge of my emotional opening to you. And I trust that you are in charge of how much you want to open to me based on where you are. And when we come together in the middle, like ninja warriors, we can create whatever we want to create. And when we're done, we step back to being who we are. Exactly. Well, again, goes to the title, collaboration, meeting in the middle. And it is that communication. And both men and women can speak up. And I think that this is where, you know, there's the, the old school of it. There's lack of communication. There's immaturity. And there's lack of experience. That we don't always know what we can say, but the most important thing is you don't regret it later. So even as the gal you were saying, you know, had a moment of, I'm not feeling comfortable. It's a matter of saying, okay, what do we need for you to feel comfortable? Maybe we won't be intimate. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll just hold each other and listen to some music and be okay with that. Totally. And I feel like that is what we're missing is a chance to just be raw within those moments. Then we look at the outcome too much. And you've talked about this before about stop looking at the outcome, but be in the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and so if you like, if you want to have like the, the leadership in an invitation, like I just want you to be who you are and I'm going to be who I am. Well, how do I take off my piece of armor first? You know, how do I say, well, you know, I've always wanted to kind of do this. You know, what would it be like if I just like smeared lube on my, my leg and you just like humped my leg for a while and like grabbed my cock? Right. Like, that would be awesome. Like the, if you could animate that, great. And so she's like, oh, uh, that's a little edgy for me, but I could, I could do that. So now you've got, like given her something that is, she can do this, this clearly would make me happy. It's a little edgy for me to ask for because that's kind of unconventional, but it, it seems right. kind of hot. And, you know, it's just like, it's a little place to start. And then she's like, well, that was awesome. Like, well, if you asked for that, then what, how about if you did this to me? And like, awesome. I can exactly. totally do that. And well, now and we're rolling. You are. That's what I like. That's exactly where I was going. Like, you get the facts rolling. You get this connection. Like, okay, I have a request. What do you think? And if you have that kind of a relationship from the get-go, then you're going to always be that way. You're always going to talk about whatever your things are. You might have every different level, but you've taught. I always say you teach people how to treat you. So by expressing that you're communicating from the get-go, then the chances are that's going to be part of the foundation you guys build your relationship connection on for future connections of intimacy or friendship or out and about. You both know your voice counts. And that I think is something you really bring to the conversation for sure. Exactly. Then it's just, then you're just communicating nonstop. And like, I, I can say anything like, boy, if you said that dude, then, then, then like asking for that little thing I was thinking of is nothing. Exactly, because we all have little ideas and thoughts in our head, but it's totally. not like exactly people don't ask it because they don't want that perception of them to be altered where there is a buildup to requesting, but at the same time, it's creating a safe space because then there might be that might be like the perfect match. Everybody has a different level of connection and intimacy and touch and passion, desire that they want. Allowing it to be revealed is asking till you both kind of come up with a mutual understanding of what that is. It's liberating. I mean, if it you is. go into a sexual encounter and actually act out something that to you would be like so like edgy, it's not even funny, but this dude somehow coached you into doing this thing that you like could never even imagine, you know, the level of accomplishment is huge. Right, or it's mutual, yeah. Absolutely. Well, my gosh, we're almost out of time. I'm like, there's so many good things that you're flowing on this. I'm like, wow. What are some of those last little words of wisdom to tie this up in a bow to really give those moments of, okay, I need to turn up this connection, whether it's being sexual or touch or talk and get some action. So there's not so many statements out there, but there's some real conversation flowing. What are some of those last little nuggets that you've got for us? Well, so, summarizing all the way back, it really has to come from a place of vulnerability. 
I mean, I, there's a feeling in myself that feels like I could be rejected any second now. That's the feeling as a dude, you know, you need to actually hold, you know, so figure out the words that allow you to find that feeling like I, this feels scary for me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways, and then I'm going to shut up and let the other person have an experience with what I just said. That creates a tremendous amount of trust and intimacy. That's, that keeps me out of on the control things. Same thing with even language. You know, like if you're in a conflict with somebody, you know, ask for permission to communicate first. Don't just dump on somebody. You know, so there's this respect, you know, for somebody else's experience with what I'm doing. Like I do things and it has an effect. You know, why I do that shit is my own business. Right. I like that a lot because so often people just overshare or hold back in such an extreme. I mean, either way, it's still an extreme. But there's something about it when the other person didn't really get permission to say what they're saying and it taps you out. It's exhausting because you've just been shoveled all this stuff where there's no filter, there's no dialogue, there's no reciprocation. And then that person becomes really unattractive and undesirable when they make it all about themselves. So learning how to speak up, say what you need to say, but also knowing that there's two people here. So we both need to feel like we're getting something out of this is so crucial. Cause unfortunately in the early dating stages, it can often be all centered on one person. Cause you know, might be a man hater and they want to be difficult and they want to find a problem or they really don't know how to communicate. So by being stronger in your own communication, you're inviting a woman to feel safe to be vulnerable. And I really appreciate you bringing in the importance of vulnerability. Yeah. Yep. It works. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It works. Awesome. Well, I love all of this. And I really feel strongly that these are tools that everybody needs to listen to, hit replay, really change how you're speaking to get the response that you're looking for. You're not controlling the response, but you're actually inviting a conversation, a connection, a communication. You're inviting something in return instead of just splatting stuff on the wall and hoping something sticks. So using these tools is going to make a big difference. Now we're excited to find out what you have for our next quarter so we'll have more next time with you so thank Great. you so much yes Thanks, I love it. I love it. i'm excited for seeing everybody get to work and change how they're communicating and stop all the freaking statements like get into a conversation it makes yes. a big difference more sex less drama <laughs> well said <laughs> all right thanks so much and we look forward to sharing again soon bye-bye